Welcome back, fans. One final time here to the Colgate Coaches Show, brought to you by Alliance Bank on 94KXZ. Though tonight, if you head down to the Colgate Inn, we're not at the end this evening. Uh, unfortunately, some unforeseen circumstances, we're recording the show ahead of time, but you're still listening to it here on uh, 94KXZ. And don't forget, Colgate plays Canisius this coming Sunday at 5 o'clock start, and we'll be on there with the pregame beginning at 445. Well, as we move into our final segment tonight, it's time to talk to another one of Colgate's freshman defensemen, another National Hockey League draft pick from Kokio Trevisago, Italy, and I'm, again, hopefully pronouncing that right. Uh, Thomas Larkin. Thomas, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight on the program. Thanks for having me. So am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, you're pronouncing it right. Excellent. That, that is good to know because that's a, a bit of a tongue twister, and I'm sure you get this a lot, but how do you go from Italy to playing Division One hockey? Uh, well, uh, I started playing hockey in Italy, and uh, obviously it's not a big sport there. Um, it's mostly soccer and uh, some basketball, and... I started playing hockey. I live uh, way up north, close to the Swiss border, and I started playing hockey there when I was uh, about six or seven years old. And uh, my dad's from the States, and uh, my mom's from Italy. And um, you know, once I got uh, serious about hockey around 14, I decided to go uh, out to prep school in uh, Exeter, New Hampshire. And um, yeah, it kind of took off from there. Mm -hmm. Now, your bio list is being from, born in London, England, yet you uh, lived in Italy. Kind of a man of the world. How, uh, how did, did you guys move from England, or how did uh, that work? Well, my, uh, my dad uh, was working in England, and that's where uh, myself and my brother and sister were born. And then when I was uh, three years old, we moved to Italy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I haven't really <laughs> moved from there. Right. But, yeah, I, I can see how it's, uh, it's pretty confusing. Right. Uh, and your New Year's Eve, not a bad birthday either. Yeah. Well, I mean, some would say it's the worst hockey birthday. You know? Why is that? Because uh, you're, you're always the youngest guy by the, by the way the uh, age years are cut out in hockey. Well, that, that is a good point. Now, you grew up in Italy. You mentioned that hockey's not really big there. Was it something that you had to, to kind of look for to play, or are there, are there a lot of rinks? Or? Uh, there actually aren't that many rinks. Um, the closest one to me is about 20 minutes, but that's because I'm lucky. But most... Uh, just growing up, for most of our youth hockey games, you'd have to travel, you know, a fair amount, you know, sometimes four, six, eight hours. Uh, luckily, I, I live pretty close to Switzerland. I played a lot of hockey there, too. I'm only about half an hour from the Swiss border, so uh, it's a lot bigger uh, over in Switzerland than it is mm -hmm. in Italy, but I still managed to find enough, uh, enough hockey growing up. What's the hockey culture like there? In Switzerland? Uh, in, in Italy, and I guess Switzerland, too. Uh, Obviously, it's different in Switzerland. Yeah, in, in Italy, it's uh, it's growing. It's definitely a growing sport. Um, in the past couple of years, especially since uh, the Turin Olympics, um, there's been a huge uh, growth in Italian hockey, and it's getting a lot better. A lot of, uh, a lot of kids are going overseas like I did uh, to play juniors in America and in uh, other places in Europe, and uh, the level's getting a lot, a lot better, and... Uh, you know, even the uh, the Olympic team is doing pretty well too. So, mm -hmm. you you went over the border to play a lot in Switzerland. Is, how different is it there, though? Because obviously it's a little bit bigger of a deal. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a much bigger deal. The uh, you, know, you can kind of see it in the uh, their uh, their pro division. Their uh, their top league there is one of the better leagues in Europe, and uh, they just take it. Um, I guess I guess it's just a much bigger sport in Switzerland than it is in Italy, and um, yeah, it's pretty good there. Again, this is the Colgate Coaches Show on 94KXZ, brought to you by Alliance Bank. Talking with Thomas Larkin here on the uh, the program tonight as we uh, wrap things up here. Um, Europeans playing a wider rink. Did you grow up playing on the uh, the wider sheet? Yep, I grew up uh, playing on the Olympic sheet, which uh, they have everywhere in Europe, and I played forward uh, up until about two years ago, actually. So it was kind of a it's kind of a big step coming over to America and getting used to the smaller rink, and uh, then moving to defense. Obviously, was a big uh, move for me, but. But yeah, whenever I go back, I kind of get thrown off by uh, by the ice sheets. Right. How, how many times do you go back? Um, I get to go back usually about three or four times a year. It's been a, um, a little more hectic uh, with college now and uh, trying to figure it out because we play a lot more games than I played in prep school. And uh, I'm actually going back in, in about a week mm -hmm. for a couple of days, and then I'll be back uh, most of the summer. Right. Be good. Now, uh, you played prep at uh, Phillips Exeter. How does how did you end up at Phillips Exeter? Because there's obviously a lot of prep schools in uh, New England. Yeah, my dad uh, my dad uh, is actually from Boston originally. He moved to Florida when he was uh, in his teens, but you know, was, uh, I was a uh, you know, grew up in Boston for a while, and he knew about prep schools. And when I told him I wanted to uh, really take hockey seriously and take it to the next level, um, he suggested uh, I look into prep schools because they have a combination of academics, which uh, both my parents and I. Uh, valued really highly and um, and the hockey part of it too uh, worked out really well and when I visited Exeter I just fell in love with it and uh, took it from there. 
what was that transition like moving from uh, Europe to the United States and uh, going to prep school and playing hockey on the uh, the smaller sheet? Yeah, it was uh, it was, it was tough. You know, the first uh, first year I played JV at Exeter and it was really just adapting to uh, the American game. Obviously, they uh, hit a lot more in the states than they do in Europe, and uh, things happen faster because it's a smaller ice sheet. And uh, it was good. After after that, I kind of got used to it and uh, really uh, used it to my advantage. Mm -hmm. When did you uh, transit? What was the transition like then, going from forward to defense? Because obviously, it's two very different positions. Yeah, I was um, after my sophomore year. Um, we lost a bunch of defensemen, and uh, it turned out we needed a couple. So I talked to my coach Andrew Barman, who uh, really helped me out, and he suggested uh, suggested I try out defense in our uh, in our preseason uh, in our preseason skates, and started trying because I really wasn't having too much success at forward, and uh, it turned out I, I just liked it a lot more. I like uh, I thought, you know, I wouldn't like it because I don't have the puck that much, but it turns out you have the puck more at defense, and uh, it's actually really nice. I really enjoy it. It seems that you kind of incorporate some of your uh, old forward skills on your defenseman's game because I, I can remember a handful of times you're rushing up the ice or leading the rush, joining with that offense. Is it kind of something like it's riding a bike once you do it, uh, you never kind of lose yeah, it? Yeah, I, uh, I try. I try to bring that uh, that offensive aspect to my game as, uh, as much as I can, and uh, obviously i got to play sound defense first, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's really served me well knowing how to play forward. Mm -hmm. How did you end up here at Colgate? Um, I, uh, was, I was looking at colleges. I just really fell in love with, uh, with Colgate and uh, the coaches here and uh, the, whole, the, the whole hockey program and the whole package, really. Mm -hmm. When did you decide that you wanted to play Division One college hockey and, and go that route to try and make it? Um, probably when I, uh, when I was 14, when I decided to come over to the States to, uh, to go to prep school. I kind of had my mind set on... Going to a uh, going to Division One, playing Division One hockey at a school that's uh, also you know very well renowned for their uh, academics. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the Colgate Coaches Show, uh, brought to you by Alliance Bank on ninety four KXZ. Talking with Thomas Larkin here. Who are some of the players you uh, looked up to when you were growing up? Some of your favorite teams. Um, growing up, I really always liked Wayne Gretzky. Uh, I didn't really get to watch much NHL growing up in Italy. They don't really have that on TV much, but. Uh, Whenever I could get, a hand, uh, get my hands on a uh, Kretzky highlight tape or something, it, it would be great. And then once I got over here, I really liked uh, Jeremy Roenick just because uh, he was from the Boston area, and that's kind of where I really learned how to play hockey once I got over here, so I kind of really liked him. Mm -hmm. Moving away from the ice, you, I'm told you speak four different languages. Uh, which, which ones are those? Uh, I speak English, French, and Italian pretty well, and uh, after that, Spanish is kind of a mix of the four, so I can... I can understand it and read it real well, but when I speak it, I kind of break into Italian a lot. Which one's your favorite? Italian, probably. Italian. Yeah. yeah. Your English isn't bad. Uh, I, sp I speak both at home. Really? So, yeah. Mm. Interesting. I don't think I've ever talked to a, a hockey player that's been able to speak four different languages before, so this is a first for me. <laughs> now, when you're on the bench with Breeze Bois, is there a little fl French <laughs> flying around in there, maybe? Uh, not on the bench, but uh, you know, when we get in the locker room and him and Robbie start speaking French, I... Uh, I like being able to listen in. Sometimes mm -hmm. I chime in, but you know they're from Quebec, and it's just uh, it's not a French I learned. It's uh, it's really right. fast, and it's kind of tough to understand those guys. Excellent. Uh, talking with uh, Thomas Larkin here, um, first season at Colgate. What's it being like a student athlete here at Colgate, playing hockey and uh, going to school at the same time? Uh, it's great. You know, uh, I'm really enjoying uh, my whole experience here, and I'm lucky that uh, Exeter was a pretty tough school, and it kind of prepared me for uh, having to deal with academics and athletics at the same time. And uh, I think it's going pretty well. Any uh, ideas of major at this point? You're still kind of floating around seeing what uh, you I'm like? Yeah, I'm still kind of floating around ideas. I'm thinking economics. Um, but, you know, that could easily change in the next uh, couple of months. Earlier this season, you scored your first goal against uh, Harvard off the deflection. I shot in the bull line. Talk us through that and uh, how that felt. Uh, it felt great. Uh, you know, we were having a tough game there. I think we were down 3 nothing at the time. And uh, the puck just bounced out in front of me, and I just uh, gave it all I had. Just bounced in and I scored. Yeah, it happens. And uh, talking with Thomas Larkin here, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, of course, you were drafted this past uh, June, like Jeremy Price was. You were taking up the Columbus Blue Jackets. Take us through that process. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, really a great honor to get drafted. Um, I never really thought before last year that that could have been uh, something I could have uh, looked up to or looked forward to. And, um, you know, I, was, uh, I didn't want to think about it too much. I talked to a couple of NHL teams, but. Uh, I really didn't want to give it much thought. My goal was always to play uh, college hockey. And so, you know, the day it happened, I was just uh, just going about my day. You know, I was at the gym, just uh, 
doing my thing, and then I got the call, which was pretty nice. Did you have a chance to get out to, uh, did they do a prospects camp? Yeah, they did, actually. Uh, the w actually started the day after the draft, so I had to scramble to get my plane tickets and everything to get over there, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. What did you uh, find out with the Blue Jackets organization? How was the, uh, the camp and everything like that? Uh, it was great. You know, we, um, we got to actually practice where the Blue Jackets, uh, the Blue Jackets do, which is attached to uh, Nationwide Arena, which is great. Is that right? Yeah. 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 My bad. <laughs> That's but, okay. Uh, yeah, and um, we kind of got a, got to get a feel for uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets organization uh, and everything it's about and got a little taste of the NHL, and it was great. And uh, finally, Thomas, we'll wrap up with this. What should we see from this uh, team coming up the second half of the season? Um, you know, I think we got, uh, got a, fire, a good fire going. Uh, we got, you know, I think we're all fired up for uh, the rest of the season. I think uh, it's going to be pretty good. Well, excellent. Uh, glad to hear that indeed. Also, nice to see somebody taking up for Mark Anderson, the mustache department, with uh, <laughs> Thank you. Ando now playing over in uh, Sweden. But, uh, Thomas, thanks a lot for joining us, and uh, good luck the second half of the season. Thank you. All right, fans, that was uh, Thomas Larkin joining us, and that's going to bring us to the end of our voyage tonight here on the Colgate Coaches Show, brought to you by Alliance Bank. I'd like to thank Don Vaughn, Jeremy Price, and Thomas Larkin for being on the show tonight. And uh, go to www.gocolgaterators.com to uh, see where the next men's ice hockey broadcast is. This is our, also our final broadcast of the first semester, so uh, happy holidays to everybody listening at home, and we'll be back with you in mid-January. This has been a presentation of the Colgate Coach Show, brought to you by Alliance Bank. I'm John McGraw. Have a good evening, everybody.